And welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. The Messages of Inspiration and Hope is proudly brought to you today by the good guys at the Six Minute Webinar. The Messages of Inspiration and Hope is a show where we bring on guests who inspire you and give you good, positive messages. And from all walks of life, from health to business to you name it. And today we've got a gentleman visiting us all the way from London, England. Went over and picked him up myself uh, virtually. <laughs> His name is Mark Stephen Pooler. He is a marketing guy. He's, he's just a, a guy that can help you raise your image because a lot of people struggle, especially they call entrepreneurs, solopreneurs. And that's very accurate because a lot of people are trying to create business from their house or their office and they don't know how. Mark is that go-to guy. We're going to meet him in just a few seconds right after this brief commercial. Hi, and welcome to the Messages of Inspiration and Hope show that's proudly sponsored by the 6-Minute Webinar. Today, we have some exciting and very interesting guests, real people just like you and me. Thank you for tuning in. Enjoy the show. Now, here's Jim. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. We're very excited to have Mark with us today. He's also going to be on our radio show next Monday, and I'll put that information up during the show. But let me welcome Mr. Mark to the stage. How are you today, sir? Hi, Jim. Thank you so much for the amazing introduction and intro inviting me onto your show. I'm really blessed to be here, so I really thank you for the opportunity. Well, let me be honest and thank you because people do not turn in from turn in and view the show because of my good looks. All they got to do is take one look at me and say, we're out of here, you know. <laughs> but really what made the show so successful has been the guests that share a lot of valuable information to folks out there because a lot of people are searching. They're searching how to promote themselves, how to be able to generate business. And most of the time they run into people say, hey, just spend money, buy this, buy that, you know. And that's okay if you got deep pockets, but, you know, most people don't. And you get frustrated, you know, you get, you buy all these Google ads and stuff like that. And you just, uh, you know, just made a donation to a huge company. <laughs> Am I right on that, Mark? <laughs> you are very, very right, Jim. And it's a struggle in the beginning when you're yes. first starting out as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And though advertising is a great way to get noticed, I much prefer an approach where other, per other people are singing your praises for you for mm -hmm. PR and media coverage is much more effective than just advertising alone. Oh yeah. Cause I mean, a lot of times, you know, you, you know, people that's uh, in health products and something like that, and they're, they're trying to, you know, reach people that are, you know, need to lose weight. Well, a lot of times, you know, most of their customers or their ideal clients is not there. Like, uh, you know, I, get, I used to get emails in from this guy says, Jim, I know you need to lose 40 pounds. I'm going like, Okay, unless I, I'm going to get my exercise in the morning by jumping around in the shower to get wet. I mean, you know, and but somehow or another, I don't know if he bought my email address or what the deal was, but he wasted a lot of time getting your information out to the right uh, uh, people. And I know you do a great job at that because you've got some big name clients who all they got to do is say, hey, Mark, yes, sir, I'll take care of it. And that's it. Game over. <laughs> I have been really blessed with my media company to have worked with some of the biggest names in business, celebrities, mm -hmm. some of the biggest names in personal development. And I like an approach of stories because people connect with stories. Mm -hmm. So though advertising can be effective, I much prefer an approach of sharing stories. <clears throat> Oh, yeah, because that's when you said that, the thing that flashed in my mind, what did people, you know, how did people get information that passed down from generation to generation before Gutenberg invented the press? And they used uh, what was called, you know, give you example, like in Jesus' day and time, he taught in parables. And it was the custom of the day for people to teach in parables because people can relate to stories. We're still hardwired that way. 
that's the best way we can, you know, remember things because if any, anything you remember in your life, if you attach an emotion to it, it's branded in your brain. That's how valuable that storytelling is. And plus, it's infotaining to people. <laughs> and they do say, Jim, the emotions that you hold have a direct impact on the reality that mm. you create. So it's important mm -hmm. to have positive, empowering belief systems, making great choices and really listening to your emotions as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dr. Sony Jackson is a good friend of mine. I don't know if you know her, do you, Mark? Do you know I Dr. I do, Sonny? actually, yes. Oh, she's one of my We're favorite connected. people. Good, 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 good. She is a, she's a ball of fire. But she was the one that brought to our attention because a lot of times in advertising, they're focused on the demographics, age, income, male, female, et cetera, et cetera. But she talks about how to get in tune with the psychographics because that's what triggers the buying response. And she did a beautiful job on that on a previous show. And, and, and prior to her, you know, educating me about psychographics, I had never heard the term before. I'll be honest, ladies and gentlemen, at age 72, I'm still learning. <laughs> Great point there. And also I would like to add, Jim, with selling it can be really uncomfortable to some people. When I first oh, started my yeah. journey, I struggled to sell. So I did a lot of coaching from learning from other great teachers. Mm -hmm. But what I came to learn, Jim, I feel if you're passionate about what you do, you have belief in the product or the service, and you come from a place of love, it's mm -hmm. really, really important. It's yeah. much easier to sell when you are genuine, coming from a good place of love. And sales techniques can be really important. Yes. But I feel love will outtake any techniques that you learn. Yeah. If you're coming from a good place, it's mm -hmm. much easier. It really is because one of the things that I heard someone say, and I'm trying to recall who said it, <clears throat> The easiest way to write a number one best-selling book is to write something that, you know, you struggled with, you overcame, and your entire focus on that book is how you can reach out through storytelling and help someone that's going through maybe something similar or something close or maybe exactly and connect with them. And your focus is on helping them to say, hey, there is a tomorrow. That is the best. I forget who told me that. But they said that is the quickest way for, to be on the, the road to having a number one best selling book. Yes, Jim, I agree with you totally. That was the very first book I launched was called Tips to Create the Life You Desire. I mm. shared all my personal story, which we can talk oh, about a little oh, bit more, yeah. but bullying, drug addiction. Mm. But it was a personal development book of helping others uh, how to overcome obstacles and build a better yeah. life in business or in life. And when I first started my journey into entrepreneurship, you hear a lot of experts saying no one wants to hear stories anymore. People are not interested. <laughs> and I didn't take that advice. I have built my whole business by sharing my personal story. I'm yeah. always interested in other people's stories. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I feel it's important that you share those challenges and those obstacles to give inspiration to others. So that's why I was really grateful you invited me onto your show because I like what the show is about. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I feel it's really important to share those challenging stories because oh, even yeah. if it just helps one person, that is it's a great achievement. Oh, that brings up something that I'd like to share with you. <clears throat> I was the MC of the event in uh, January of 2019 called the Pathway for Vets event. It was in, held in Colorado Springs. And I was going around to the different veteran centers, and I saw this young man sitting there, and 
I just handed him a brochure and told him a little bit about it. And he said, well, let me get my planner out here. And he rearranged his schedule. He says, I'll be there. I said, okay, sister. And I said, rest assured, it's free to come and it's free to leave. There's not going to be no sales pitches there <laughs> because that's the last thing people want to hear is a sales pitch. And um, I didn't know anything about him. I know he'd been in the military, you know. And he came over and all the energy and all the love and compassion we had you know, Bill Heinrich there. We had Angel Marie Monticelli. And you're going to see this young lady on a commercial here when we get ready to break. Um, we had a lot of good people there. We invited Dr. Charles Weber, who is a, um, he's a clinical doctor that specializes in PTSD and drug abuse. He's a veteran, you know. And so we, that was the kind of energy we had in the room. And Angel Marie, she had this young man up <laughs> She was doing the shine on movie. She was dancing. And to make a long story short, we got ready to leave that night. And I'm one of the ones, last ones going, walking out. Here, this guy called my name, Jim. And I look over, it was him. And he's sitting there and he's crying. And I'm thinking, oh, my goodness. Because, you know, I'm not a good counselor, I'll be honest. I, I have compassion, but finding the right words or something like that, it's, it does not come to me easily. I got to be honest. So you got to recognize what your limitations are and where your gifts are. And fortunately for me, Bill Heinrich walked by. I said, hey, Bill, come here. And Bill is a guy about clarity in the mind, about love and compassion and all that. And the young man, he was homeless. He had a drug problem. But what was really killing him deep down inside was the fact that he didn't feel like he was a good father to his kids. That was tearing him up on the inside, and that's why the tears were rolling. And Bill says, well, you know, I'll come and he, he drove him home, and he dropped him off at a Ford dealership because this young man, this is January in Colorado Springs. Colorado's not warm in January. I mean, <laughs> people go to Colorado to ski, okay? And he was sleeping under a bridge. We're talking about cement, you know, you know how bridges are. They're made out of cement, and underneath them, they got cement and all. I mean, that's about as burr rabbit coal as you can get. He came back the next day, and Dr. Charles Weber spoke. We introduced him there. And long story short, the young man, um, I still stay in touch with him. He's no longer, I mean, he hadn't been homeless now in well over a year. He's off of drugs. So my point being, if that was the only thing we accomplished at that entire event, we were overpaid. Would you agree with that, Mark? I totally, totally agree, Jim. Drugs mm -hmm. are hard. Mm -hmm. Dr drugs are one of the hardest things to quit. Mm -hmm. And it's a slow road to recovery, it was for oh, me. Yeah. And yeah. having someone to give you guidance, support, whether that's a friend, a mentor, a teacher, mm -hmm. a family member, going to an event, getting inspiration, yeah. it does help because you should never have to suffer alone, Jim. Exactly. Because that's what you're supposed to do with all your gifts, whether it's if you've got a great product that helps people increase their healthy lifestyle, you you owe it to them to be able to share it with the ideal clients who could you can enhance their health. You owe them that because no one wants to enjoy bad health and uh, it's just, you know, anything that you do, any of your gifts. See, life's about giving. And Mark, I want you to go in and share with the audience, if you would, sir, about your journey, how you came from where you are to where you, from where you were to where you are right now, if you would. Okay, I'll keep it nice and concise for our listeners. Okay. I come from a past of bullying, so right from primary school, first school, I was bullied age five. Um, it was about the way I looked and also about my sexuality before I knew it myself. So mm -hmm. I would get called gay, queer, mm -hmm. big chin, big ears. Mm -hmm. That was really hard, Jim, at the age of five years old. Now, oh, yeah. I purposely went to a secondary school that no one from primary school was going to. That was great for the first couple of weeks. I didn't get bullied. 
only that didn't last long and the bullying got mm -hmm. a lot worse. I remember one day walking home from school, one of the hard lads came and kicked me in my back for no reason and I had to run three miles home. Wow. It left me with low self-esteem, low sure. self-confidence, body image issues. And I left secondary school at the age of 15 with a really bad education. My education really suffered. Mm. By the age of 15, I started drug taking. It started with soft drugs, things like amphetamine, cannabis. One great thing, I started hairdressing at the age of 16 and I was lucky with my hairdressing career to work with some of the biggest name hairdressers here in the mm. UK. So I was working for celebrity stylists at the age of 16 wow. and I was used to dealing with celebrities because they would come in to the salons where mm -hmm. I was working. That really built my confidence. Sure. I learned great business skills, customer service, Mm -hmm. But my drug taking got a lot worse, Jim. Mm -hmm. So by the age of 18, I'd lost lots of weight, living a really party lifestyle, started to get headaches. And by the age of 21, my life had spiralled out of control and I was addicted to crack cocaine and heroin. I went out on a party night out with friends, age 21. Now I'm 39 years old now, I know I don't look it. But age 21, I went out on a party night with friends, having the time of my life one minute. I tried a new clubbing drug and the next minute I woke up in hospital. My chest all shaven where shock pads had been used on me to bring me back to life. Mm. Bruises all up my arms where adrenaline had been pumped into me to bring me back to life. I was living a bad life. It was going nowhere, Jim. Mm. A few days after that, you would have thought I would have seen the light because I had just died. But I carried on drug taking, Jim, because I had no confidence, no direction for my future. A few days after that, my mum caught me in my bedroom taking crack cocaine. She came in the bedroom, grabbed the crack pipe off me, ran outside with it, chucked it down the drain. And she did one of the best things she could have ever have done for me. And that was to chuck me out of the family home. Jim, it's really true. You end up like the people that you are surrounded mm -hmm. by. Your associations are so important. I moved away from the area and all the people that were dragging me down. I always say... Have a look at your circle, the people that you are close to. Ask yourself, would you swap places with those people? Because if the answer is no, it's time to change your circle. Yeah. I had to grow up really quickly, Jim, because it went for, for, from me having everything done for me, living with my parents, my dinners cooked, my ironing done to mm. having my own uh, apartment, having to look after myself. So I grew up really quickly. Mm -hmm. I give up crack cocaine using the power of my mind, the power of thought. Now, I would advise anyone suffering with addiction, seek medical assistance. Oh, Even yes. Even though I didn't, I use the power of my mind that is what doctors are there for. So do seek medical assistance. So I give up strong drugs using the power of my mind, the power of thought. And I always say to people, 
it's so important to think about the thoughts that you're putting into your mind because mm -hmm. it does have a direct impact on the reality that you create. So I always talk about the power of positive, empowering belief systems, making great choices mm -hmm. with repetition any reality can be created. Now, mm -hmm. it was a slow road to recovery for me, Jim. Mm -hmm. I still carried on taking softer drugs for a few years and party drugs, but I did give up those strong drugs. It was a slow road to recovery. I always worked through my addiction as a hairdresser. Fast forward a little bit to the age of 30, I had had enough of working for other people, making lots of money for them and not making lots of money for myself. Mm. So I set up as a mobile hairdresser and that was the start of my entrepreneurship journey. A mm -hmm. year into my business, I joined a network marketing company, which was great. It opened up the world of personal development, social media, entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And I did that for two years. I built a team of 50, built businesses in six different countries. And I used to watch the inspirational speakers on, in, on the stage at network marketing events. So I decided I want to be an inspirational speaker. So I left network marketing around three or four years ago now to become an inspirational speaker. I mm. spoke all over the UK. Mm -hmm. I've spoken on the same stage as Jack Canfield. I mm. came an international bestseller in the UK, Canada and the USA for my book, Step Into Your Brilliance, which is an entrepreneurship guide to the power of positive storytelling and social media to position yourself as an expert. So I really started to build my own profile, Jim, and I was interviewed on a radio show just like this, and they asked me to become a co-host of the radio show. That is what led me to what I do today mm -hmm. in media and PR through written credibility articles, radio yeah. interviews, TV interviews and press and major publication features. Sure. That's really important because, uh, you know, I was sh sharing with some people here uh, a while back, a couple of months ago, um, they were talking about podcasts, how important is it and all that. And I said, yeah, there's a lot of podcasts out there. But I says, listen to this. It used to be here in the U.S., you'd walk into truck stops and truckers would buy these audio books. And they have just rack, two or three racks of them there. And they could pick up one here and, or rent it or whatever they did as long as they came to the same station, turn it back in and get another one or whatever. It was kind of like a, one of those... Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of the it, the name of the company, but I can't. Anyway, right now, podcasting is huge because even the TV show we have here, people can listen to it. You know, they don't have to see, you know, watch us actually speak, but they can listen to it when they're driving a car or doing something else. And, uh, I mean, look at construction workers. They get out there and they turn the radio or their, their boom box wide open. They'll, you know, be louder. You can hear them three miles away because it's got to be louder than the power tools. <laughs> but um, it's really a huge market for people to be able to. And think about the impact you can make on someone's li life if you're sharing something of a story. Because I know, Mark, I know there's some young folks out there, maybe some older folks, too that can connect to you and say, hey, if he had a drug problem and he got over it, I can get over my drug problem. And what you need to do, you need to get in touch with Mark and send him an email. And you know he'll be glad to communicate with you, help you any way he can, because uh, he is a, uh, he's a guy that helps people get from where they are to where they want to be. And to give you a good example, you know, we were talking about this before we went live, we were talking about, I got a comment here. Let's see. Oh, okay. 
Oh, Karen Renee Perkins is watching us. Oh, hey, Dr. Hey. Karen. I've been chatting to Dr. Karen today. So oh, isn't thank she a you wonderful for lady? Tuning in. Isn't she a wonderful lady? She's absolutely incredible. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna have her on the on the TV show too. Oh yeah, I gotta she's bring a her great on board. Guest. Oh yeah. Yeah, she is she's a a bubble of energy, isn't she? <laughs> But, you know, it's, it's amazing how, you know, when people, when Don and I started the Speaker's Pathway, we'd ask people, what is it you want to do? I want to make money. Well, you know, okay. I mean, well, what are you going to do? <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do to earn that money? And when you come from the heart and provide a great product for people and things of this nature, guess what? Game over. Game over. And uh, we need to just stop for a moment here and let me... Uh, Pay a bill or two here. We'll be right back right after this brief message. Here's Angel Marie Monticelli. Hi, I'm Angel Marie Monticelli with Angel Marie Shines. And I had the pleasure, oh, the honor, to go through training for the six-minute webinar. Oh, my gosh. This webinar and how it's structured and how they teach it. Thank you, Speakers Pathway Coalition. Thank you, Don McGrath and the whole team for the six minute webinar, because you made it so simple, easy. And the way you lined it out with the outline, I can reproduce it and reproduce it. And I'm already getting the engagement. I'm getting people that are coming back. that are saying, oh, I love this webinar that's so short, so to the point, and I love your products and what I'm selling, but then what I'm also, the services that I provide, and I can do for any of this because I have the framework. So thank you so much to the whole team because the six minute webinar totally rocks. Thank you. She sent us that video. We didn't even know it was coming, and I put the music to it, and she says, what kind of music is that? I said, that's good music. That's the doors. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but, she, yeah, she's just a wonderful, wonderful lady. She's another one of my favorite ladies, a ball of energy. And, you know, she comes straight from the heart. And everything that you see here, people that you want to hang out with, you want to surround yourself with like-minded people who come from the heart, uh, people that's just in it for the money and they're only interested in butter and their own bread, they cheat themselves out of the true riches of life. And, you know, Mark, I think I shared with you, and if I have, you know, I don't bore anybody out there, but how this TV show came about had nothing to do with me. There was no email sent, there was no doorbells rang or nothing. It started during the pandemic and we came together and with our executive training directors, Bill Heinrich, and uh, Dr. Sony Jackson was part of that team, and Tamara Hunter, and, and, uh, we, and Bill says, we need to address this pandemic. And uh, immediately, Bill just says, hey, well, we got, you know, Zoom and Facebook Live. That's what everybody had, you know. He said, well, we just get us some speakers and start putting on some uh, webinars and call it Messages of Inspiration, Hope, and Support. That was the original name. So we did a call for speakers. And we got 60, but during that meeting, I missed one very important thing. Immediately, what happened was that Sony says, I can do this. And Don says, I can do that. And Preston says, I can do this. And then says, hey, Jim, that's what? You're going to be the host. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we went through a, a three different uh, series of speakers. And then Tamara Hunter says, hey, Jim, this show is too powerful for it just be on Facebook Live and Zoom and all that. You need to take it where you can broadcast it around the world to mil millions of devices. And uh, so that's how it came about. It we didn't sit down and have a you know a piece of paper and a cup of coffee and do a powwow because it just didn't happen that way. My point being in sharing that story with you. Look what happens when you come from the heart and you give and you help people because our, we were all scared about that pandemic at first. I mean, no one knew anything about it except it was bad news. And some people were, you know, just they were even afraid to go to the grocery store. You're so and, right, Jim. And we were just wanting to share some good messages of, you know, 
inspiration and positive things. And uh, it just pulled us, you know. And, and I, I like what Bill Heinrich says, if you get out of your head and get into your heart, you can go places. <laughs> That's very true, because as long as you're stuck in your head, your head is, when you get recognized that your mind is not a crystal ball. All they can do is hold a big rear view mirror in front of you and show you the <laughs> what, what, how you travel down the pathway of life, the good and the bad and the ugly and all those wonderful things. But Mark, in your travels, my goodness gracious, you've really come a long, long way. You've seen a lot about life. And what I really admire about you is your ability that you just want to reach out and help people. And You, you mentioned a great point, Jim, that some people aren't as genuine as they make out and they're not coming from a place of love. Right. And they are, that's very short-lived in my eyes. When you come oh, yeah. from a place of love and build real connections, the universe opens up, opportunities open up. And for those people that do want to earn money, don't focus on the money, focus on being of value and how mm -hmm. you can serve others and really focus on getting something that your target market needs, a great mm -hmm. product or a service that is needed by your target audience. It's much better to be a person of value and service and the money will come. Oh, yeah, you're so absolutely correct. I always like Zig Ziglar's talking. And Zig would, uh, I met, if he's one thing he's known for saying, he'd say, you can get anything out of life that you want as long as you help other good people get what they want. <laughs> and I know <laughs> where Zig true. got, I, I know where Zig got that from because Solomon wrote, and listen up, folks, listen to the prerequisite here. Solomon wrote about the generous person by watering others will be watered themselves. Notice the prerequisite in there. And see, that's a universal law. So if someone's trying, you know, to, to fudge and get ahead, you know, they're only focused on buttering their own bread. They are cheating themselves out of the true riches of yes. life. And the, the yes. true riches of life is the things that money can't buy. Yes, you know? I agree. Mm -hmm. And t tell us a little bit about your business. I mean, you know, you've, you're, goodness, you're an inspirational speaker. You're, you know, you, I'm going to give turn the mic over to you because I'll butcher it. <laughs> I do speak in schools around drug awareness, mental health, bullying, body image and sexuality. That is my way of being of service because I went through all of those things and I found my childhood through school really hard. I also speak at great entrepreneurship events and I always share my story. I talk about how to step into your brilliance, the importance of being seen, noticed and heard. My main business, Jim, is my PR agency, TMSP agency, which is a premium media and PR agency. I also have my own publishing platform, mspnewsglobal.com. So I support high profile, high value individuals to be seen, heard and get noticed with worldwide digital media to become known globally. What that wow. means, Jim, written credibility articles, like I mentioned at the beginning, it's much more effective than advertising, having someone else sing your praises through mm. powerful stories. So written credibility articles. I also do expert positioned radio interviews. My TV show launches in February as well. Yay, Jim. <laughs> also, I do press features, press release, and major publication features. So I support my clients to get seen, noticed and heard with digital mm. media. Everyone is online, Jim. Through this pandemic especially, people have realised the importance of being seen and getting noticed online. And that is what I specialise mm. in. Yeah, you're exactly right. Because uh, even here on the TV show, I have uh, you know guests that want to come on. And immediately they got a product and they hear, you know, all the 
places we're at, like on Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, and exposure to millions of devices around the world and all that. And that's fine and dandy, but they want to say, wow, I can sell all this stuff. And they're like, whoa, no, 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 no. <laughs> People get, they want to get to know you, like you, and trust you. They want to, you, know, you want them to be, for them to recognize that whatever you, your specialties are, you're their go-to person. That's the prime objective. I said, I, and the way I explain it to them sometimes, I had this one, one guy had to explain it down, had to get down to the third grade level. <laughs> I says, how many times have you picked up your remote and did a search for sales webinars? <laughs> you know, and then he kind of got it. I says, you know, people, you know, they want to get to know you. They want to, you know, you're, this is your opportunity to say, hey, I can solve this problem whether it's a coaching problem or whether it's a product or whatever it might be. And, you know, this is how you do it. And on this is, you know, I'm the, I'm the go-to guy because you're not going to connect with everybody. Not everybody's going to like you and that's fine. But there's the people that you can attract. Those are your ideal clients. Cause after all, yes. can you handle millions of people? If they come at you at one time, Very you'd be hiding on You'd be hiding under your bed. <laughs> you want to share value. You really want to show people that you have been through lots of challenges because oh, yeah. it's so easy when you look at, say, my profile to think, oh, he's doing great. And that's why I like to share what I have actually been through to get where I am today and mm. to show people that there is always light at the end of the tunnel and if i can go from my past why can't you get to your new future sure. reality it's just sure. about taking the action and doing the steps to get there which i did over many years and i like what bill heinrich always talks about he says get out of your head and uh he, he wouldn't talk to me personally i don't think he was but he says you're not that smart <laughs> but he says if you come from the heart You've torn down all those barriers, and he is so correct on that because in your mind, you know, like a, uh, one guy that I was talking to several months ago on the radio show during the break, and I said, you know, the real problem I've seen you've, you've solved is that you learned how to forgive yourself because your forgive mind just remembers the past. He said, yeah, that's right. I said, well, share that when we come back, you know, because that's yes. what the, that, because the TV show, the radio show is only a vehicle. It's to get information out there to people so people can get to know you. And it, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity because the, the virtual stages, be it a podcast, be it a radio show, whatever TV show, I mean, it's here to stay. We were talking before the before we went live. There's no airports, no hotels, and no lost baggage. <laughs> but Jim, you mentioned a great point there about forgiveness. So mm. no one's perfect. We oh, all have yeah. things that we have to forgive ourselves for. And when you are going through challenging times and you feel the world is against you. Mm -hmm. you will find it hard to forgive yourself and you will be focused on those mm -hmm. problems like you mentioned. Now, I have done so much self-improvement and personal development and I work on mindset, NLP, hypnotherapy, meditation, real strong rituals that really support me. No, I'm getting great results and I'm at a level where I'm quite comfortable with the reality mm -hmm. I am in. I'm more focused on my future and the person I am becoming in my future and my present reality. So you're right. Forgiveness is really important. So you oh, can yeah. be present and be more focused on the future rather than worrying about the past. So I think that was a really important point that you made. Yeah, because, uh, you know, we all, you know, speaking personally, I'd going down a pathway of life. I mean, I've missed a few curves that everybody knew I should have made, <laughs> you know, and you can you dwell on that and let it just eat you up. But I mean, if it's OK, I made a mistake. Yes. I mean, even when I was growing up, my dad used to, he, he had two famous comments he always told me. And I've said this for another on a previous show, folks, so please bear with me. But one thing he always, I heard many times as a kid growing up, he said, son, exactly when did that seem like a good idea to you? <laughs> 
And looking back now, dad was right. But at the time, I thought I was right. And is you think you think you can do something and you're you're right right now and this, but it could be wrong. And if you make a yes. mistake, okay, forgive yourself and go on. Yes. That's the point. And your your past should never define who you are. Yes, sir. You're right about that because you know when you admit when you admit that you've made a mistake or you own it, absolutely own it. And uh, when you do that, then you're able to go and grow. But as long as you try to camouflage that and pretend like it didn't happen in life, well, you've just shackled yourself to a ball and chain. That's kind of like trying to swim across a lake with a ball and chain attached to your ankle. You're not gonna. You're not gonna make it. You know. Again, we think alike, Jim, because that is something I was going to touch on today. Go ahead. Being responsible. Now, mm. when I first started entrepreneurship, why aren't I getting results? Why aren't they helping me? Why aren't they giving me support? And one big life lesson I have learned, you have to be responsible for mm. your own outcomes, your own action, the results that you are getting. Because when you own your mistakes when you are responsible for the actions you take for some reason it changes the way that you approach life and the way mm -hmm. you approach business knowing that yes people will support you but no one is going to do it for you you have yeah. to be responsible for your own success yeah. I know in my life, as you were talking, it brought back that sometimes when you feel that pressure about, you know, when you're on that moment, you got to make that decision and you just kind of feel like, OK, but if you come out and just say, you know, I I'm sorry, I it's my fault. I did it. It's kind of like you get a, a fresh breath of air or something. Yes. Totally and with my right. warped sense, of, and usually my warped sense of humor after the dust settles on something like that, I say, "Yeah, I goofed that thing up, and I didn't need any help. <laughs> I did it all by myself." And I got to share something with you. You'll get a kick out of this, Bill Heinrich. He came on our radio show, and he was a guest. And I asked him, "I said, Bill, what's your topic today?" He says, "My life is screwed up, and so is yours." I said, "Well, thank you very much. But what's your topic today?" <laughs> And that was his topic. And but his his message was, you know, you're not perfect. So don't try to be perfect because no, perfection is yeah, perfection is a that, that paralyzes you. You never get anything done if you're focused on trying to be perfect. Great topic, Jim. Now tell us a little bit, you know, other than you know what you have, tell us a little bit more about yourself because I find you very interesting. I mean, you're just yeah, it's, I'm just really amazed at all the things you've overcome in your life. You didn't let it define you. That's that's incredible. It's taken a lot of self-work, Jim. Mm -hmm. And it was really when I was 30 and I started network marketing that opened me up to personal development. I've invested thousands and thousands of pounds in coaches, mentors, voice coaching, training programs seminars i have really had to do a lot of self-work so never think personal development is going to be instant it's a life long mm. journey that you have to work on my yeah. passions i have a lovely dog named lily she's 10 years old she's my world she keeps me mm. lots of company mm. i love my job jim i really just love mm. what i'm doing because i'm really serving others to build their global profiles because i struggled in the beginning jim mm. i i spoke all over the uk for a whole year and didn't turn a penny to build my own global profile. So it really makes me happy serving others to build oh, their yeah. global profiles. So I made all the mistakes so they mm. don't have to. I just love what I do in business. I love I love networking and socialising. Mm. So it has been hard the last year, Jim. I've missed networking events. I had a big event in Toronto cancel with 
Grant Cardone where I had done some PR for the event. I was a platinum guest, so I've got lunch with Grant Cardone, Kevin Harrington, mm -hmm. Kevin Hart. I've got photos with them, VIP parties. That got cancelled in March. It will either happen this year or early next year. So I was also coming to USA. That got cancelled. So I was really sad about that. I oh, yeah. feel for people at the moment, the world is going through changes that we have never been through. But I still say to people, don't focus on negativity too much. Mm. Don't get too plugged into mainstream media because oh, yeah. you will only <laughs> see the negatives. There will be hope at the end of the tunnel and it has been hard. I've missed networking, face-to-face -face meetings, being able to meet friends for coffee. It's been a hard year, but the positive is the power of Zoom, the power of yeah. online, the power of television shows like this, podcasts and being able to run our businesses online it oh, really yeah. has shown that that is a great thing that we have jim it's here to stay because once people made that uh pivot and they use that word a lot and pivot or accepted that says hey and they get it I mean, this is just kind of like, you know, chocolate cake. I mean, hey, wow, that's pretty good stuff there, you know. I got to mention a few folks here on the comments here. Of course, Dr. Karen Perkins is still with us. She says, amen, your past does not define you, how you react to the past and behaviors you have you have Thank now. You, Dr. Karen. Oh, and she, uh, she, she's one of my favorite people, you know. And she's we have a, a young lady. Friend. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I got to tell you I got to tell a little story about uh, uh, Dr. Karen Perkins. She was on my ninth episode of the radio show. We started that thing April the 5th, 2019. So ever Friday, whatever the ninth was there, it's probably in May, I guess, no, June. And uh, <clears throat> she, her sister told us, hey, I heard you on the radio, you know, on a Friday night or Thursday night or something like that. She says, I wasn't on the radio. Yeah, you were, you know. Long story short, you know, checking back and forth. They had played the show that she was on, not because of me, but because of who she is. Okay, let's let's keep everything in perspective here. <laughs> and it was on a, a FM station out in Utah. And so I contacted them and sent them an email. I said, hey, thank you very much. I got some more shows if you'd like to have them. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if they did or not. But anyway, there's another young lady here by Danica Gunther. If I Donica mispronounce, Gunther, yeah, she's another great mm. friend, client, oh, okay. and someone that I know well. Yeah. Hi, Donica, it's great to connect with you. Oh yeah, I mispronounce names very easily first time. Don't even have to practice on it. So forgive me on that. She says you found your purpose, Mark. That is why you're happy and fulfilling. Thank and you for watching. It's great to have you here. Oh yeah, and that's just spot on because you know whenever you're focused on helping others and. Uh, you know, what really amazes me, I was speaking on a stage, I forget where it was at. It might have been in Orlando, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it was in Orlando. And this person came up to me, I didn't know from, I didn't know the guy from, never, I didn't even see him before. And he says, can I talk to you? And I said, yes, sir. And he says, you really touched my heart. And I'm going like that. And I'm standing there, you know, I'm trying to, you know, I'm thinking, I did, you know, because it, it, it just goes to show you what an impact you can make on someone without even knowing it. That's the, the, yes. the message I want to get across. That's how Power valuable words. Yeah, storytelling is very, very powerful because people connect with that. Yes. They really do. And we've got about, uh, oh, maybe about nine, ten minutes left. There'll they'll, they'll, they'll be a big uh, hook that comes here and drags me off when it's, <laughs> if I go over. <laughs> But I want to give you some more time to share anything in your heart that you'd like to with the audience, if you would, please. So I would say no matter of your past or your present circumstances, you can create any future reality that you would like to create. 
it starts with having positive, empowering belief systems, making better choices and repetition and action. I'd like to share a little story to explain this. If you think of a street performer, a street performer will be on the streets playing their music and the crowds walk past and no one takes any notice of them. But that street performer carries on regardless and eventually one person will stop. As soon as that one person stops, a crowd forms. Be the street performer. Focus inwards on your own goals and your own dreams, your own desires. Don't focus on negative outside circumstances and eventually one person will stop. A crowd will form. What you are focusing on will show up. If you're suffering with any relationship issues, addictions, any kind of bullying, never suffer alone. Seek support from a friend, a mentor, a teacher, a family member. You should never suffer alone. But until anyone can help you, it's important that you admit to yourself that you are going through problems before anyone else can support you. If I can change my life from being a drug addict who's been through bullying and collapsed and died to being the person I am today, having my own PR firm, publishing platform, my own radio show, a TV show starting, and truly coming from a place of love and service. If I can do it, anyone can, Jim. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, a lot of people do not realize that I suffer from glossophobia. And that's kind of a funny story because glossophobia is the fear of public speaking. And so that happened to me in the third grade. And we're going to give all book reports. And I thought, oh, book reports? Are you kidding me? It scared me. And then the, the, the teacher, she put the salt on the wound. We had to go to the school library to check out a book. So I'm thinking, oh, my goodness. You know, and I figured, well, I'll call in sick that day. Tell mother I got a, tell my mother I got a tummy ache or something. And, of course, mom was, you know, easy going. And then the teacher said, well, if you're not, if you're sick that day, we'll just reschedule you. And I'm going like, well, so much for that idea. So we had to go to the library and get the book. And the, the book that I went in to get, you know what it was I was looking for? The thinnest, the thinnest book they had. <laughs> and because uh, I was just a little kid, you know, I'm, and uh, but it was a horrible experience for me. I avoided public speaking for decades then when I came back off of uh, sub, uh, Operation uh, Desert Storm, I was on active duty for a year because I was in the reserves. And my unit was going away. So I had to find a new home. And so the only place I could find a new home was with the uh, with a, with a uh, 4161st, what was called a USARF uh, Reserve School. They were instructors. And I thought, okay. And I signed on with them. And then I remember that first Saturday morning driving over there. I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, the words of my dad, son, exactly when did this seem like a good idea to you? Because I was petrified in front of people. But I teach classes on how to overcome that. And when I tell people that I had a fear of public speaking, they say, are you kidding me? No, I'm not. But I hit it. I was OK in a boardroom, something like that, or in a meeting. I was fine. But standing up in front of people and talking, I mean, I was I avoided that like the bubonic plague. <laughs> It's one of the biggest fears, Jim, and mm. the beginning of my journey, I'd sh my yeah. voice would shake, I'd be shaking. It was a huge, huge challenge for me. I always say practice, prep practice yeah. preparation, presentation, the three yep. Ps. Exactly that. And get you, you know, be able to record your voice. And I'll let you in on a little secret because we're almost out of time. When you're up there, 
Remember, they don't know what you're going to say. So if you forget something or omit something, no big deal. Okay? Don't Very beat yourself fair. up. Secondly, this is a nicety to know. That's the English way or my country English way of saying write this down and remember it. A nicety to know. Take a deep breath and relax and focus on the words that's important. Pronounce them phonetically. Yes, it really calms the true. body down. And if you control your breathing and you do that, you're going to say, hey, I, this wasn't as bad as what I thought it was. And this is not yes. like that. And this is not as bad as oral surgery or something, you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, because before, I mean, I was scared to death. I mean, I just, you know, stood there, you know, <laughs> looking like a statue more than anything else. I hear you. We got another young lady here. I'm not going to even try to pronounce her name because I've already messed up the first young lady's name. A-G-N-I-E-S-Z-K-A -A Stiles is her last name. Do you know her S-T-I-L-E-S? Anika Stiles, yes. I'm glad you said that because I, I slaughter names. I, I got a degree hey, in Southern Great Spring. to see you. Thank <laughs> you for coming on to support me. She's another great person who has interviewed mm. me as well, actually. Good, good, good. Amazing and pure inspiration. Well, thank you so much. And to, you know, Danica and to Dr. Karen Perkins, thank you so much for tuning in. We we're just about out of time. I should have played two more commercials, but, you know, since the I – I have an in with the boss. They, they won't say too much to me <laughs> because the reason why your message that you were delivering today was much more important than us playing a commercial for the six minute webinar and the six minute webinar is a great thing. Please go there and check it out. We got some videos there to show you. And, uh, but I want to just stay with Mark here for just the last few seconds here. Mark, my goodness gracious, the information you shared today, the time just flew. It did. And to Thank prove... Thank you for the opportunity, Jim. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Because if it was just me here, my goodness gracious. Like I told you before, you know, I was a backup singer and they kept telling me, back up, back up. <laughs> <laughs> I can't a play a music host, with Jim. Some great questions. But, but, you know, the thing that I want to share with the audience out there Mark's stories, how did they connect with you? That's a living example, as plain as it can get, of how important storytelling is to be able to relate to your ideal client, because that's the mission. And uh, let's see, I've got another message here right quick. Oh, she says, great interview. Thanks for sharing valuable nuggets. Well, you're quite welcome, young lady. That's Thank Danica. You. Yeah, and, you know, that, that message for you, Mark, because you're the one sharing the nuggets. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just sitting here pushing the buttons and changing the readings down there on the, on the ticker tape. <laughs> but, ladies and gentlemen, our time is gone. Thank you so much, Mark, for being on here. We look forward to having you on the radio show next week. Your future is now. We're on Toganet. We're on um, iHeartRadio and a few other places. Google, uh, Google Podcast, iTunes, Spotify. And grandma's radio, as I like to say. <laughs> but thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, and Mark. Thank you, sir. It's been Appreciate a you. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>